Hello everyone, it's the Willing Redbox and welcome to my world. So as things are progressing nicely with the wall for the next part of the series where I'm actually building the bigger city, I thought it might be worth actually coming in and doing a tour of this world. Since there's quite a few new subscribers to this channel, I thought it might be nice just to show you around and see what this world is about. So this world is actually known as Fox Grove. Now it's a pun on the name Willing Red Fox, and in regards to the world, it's actually something that I wish to progress with the channel. You see, I wish to build something that actually changes and evolves as well as the channel does. So hopefully we can see how things progress as time goes on. Now the reason why this is the best place to start is because this village wasn't actually made in this world. This actually had to be brought in from another world that started before 1.18 and then got simply brought over once it was completed. So this was actually one of the first builds I actually did on this channel. And the simple goal behind it was actually to transform the village. So the village was actually kept pretty much the same and then the buildings were just updated with newer blocks and newer designs. So for example here you can see the blacksmith has all been updated with the newer blocks instead of just being all oak wood. And not only that, the marketplace has been expanded and left with the original oak wood that I was built with. On top of that I added more buildings just to fill it out a bit more as well as improve the trees to make that look a little bit better. And not only that, I did update the church so that it actually looked a little bit nicer than being just complete cobblestone. After all that I added a wall around the city just to make it feel like it was actually being protected. As well as adding a pond just to add a nice little feature in there that is a little hidden away and can be actually viewed at different points. Now you've probably noticed this towering over the city. Now this is actually a number tower. You will see these all around the world just simply because I wanted to mark out when things were going to be completed and at what milestone I actually reached when they got completed. As you probably guessed at this point I actually hit a thousand views. On top of this village being added into the world I actually added this forest as well. So every tree here was actually planted by hand and I had to use bone meal to actually make them grow so that they actually have the dense forest you can see here. Now that alone did take a few hours to complete but we got it done in the end and we actually connected everything up using the these little pathways. Each path is actually lit up with all these different lanterns standing off to the side so that way at night you can actually walk through here and it actually looks quite nice. And on top of that we actually have a quite a nice view over here. And so when we can see here you can actually see Foxgrove. Now the first village that we visited doesn't actually have a name and I kind of like it not having a name as it never got one in the beginning so it just kind of fits just to leave it as is. Now as we do continue down this path we're actually going to make it to the crossroads. Now that we're at the crossroads we can actually go one of two ways. We can either go that way to Foxgrove or we can head that direction to some other builds. But first, we're going to head over to Foxgrove. And as you can see, Foxgrove was actually a much bigger project and actually took a lot longer to finish. So for this build, I decided that I would take the original buildings and redesign them completely so that they, they had a new feel to them and actually were redesigned so that they could actually be functional. An example of this is actually looking at this blacksmith here. You can see now that I've got a whole additional building added to the side. And not only that, every single one of these houses are actually furnished. Not only downstairs, but upstairs too. And of course, the market stalls got updated as well. And I did keep the towers all the same, just simply so it gives that same feeling that all these villages are somewhat connected but as always I couldn't miss out a water feature but as we come around the edge of the village and actually head towards this sign you can see that we actually have some wheat fields now I decided to put these inside this village just simply because I thought it would look nice and it does fill up the space quite well but from a lore perspective you probably could just say that the wheat fields are there just in case they have to shut the doors and keep everyone out and on the other side of this gate you can see that there actually are some boats here but as we head up these stone stairs, you can actually see that we're going towards the marketplace. However, if we take a right and head this way, you can see that there's more houses this direction. Not only that, but you can see that there are hotels and restaurants built from the L-shaped houses that normally spawn in villages. As you can tell, it's changed quite a bit. And of course, the interiors are all designed as well. And of course, the church has an update as well. Now, this one looks a little bit fancier just simply because this is going to be a much bigger village. So with it being a bigger village, it needed a bigger church. And as you can see here, we have a wall dividing up where the marketplace is. So everything has its own little section and actually feels like it's his own part. Not only that, there's little storage places actually tucked away behind the houses. But with that being said, we're going to actually walk up the main stone path that connects the main gates, and you can see we're now in the marketplace. And of course, we have the next number tower here. At 4,500 views, this was actually finished. And of course, we've got a smaller dock over here as well. But for now, we're going to do a little bit of backtracking. We need to run through the city and actually go around one of the side streets. I know this tower may feel out of place being in the middle of the village, but when I was actually building this place, the wall actually came up to here at one point. But as you can tell the buildings have all changed and have actually been quite nicely designed so that they can be used multiple times and not really feel copied except for this one this one wasn't the best house now as we come to this fountain you can actually divide in multiple directions you can either head this way 
way and actually walk around the city and go back towards more housing that way, or you can head further in. But before that, we actually walked right past one of the important features of this place, and that is this little cliff that's actually sat right behind. Now I designed this because I wanted it to have like a tear effect, like the houses were more important at the top than at the bottom, but at the same time giving a nice little aspect of different heights. And of course, as we go up this direction, there are more houses up here as well. So I put bigger houses towards the back of the city, just simply because I thought if people were going to visit this village, then it would be nicer for them to have somewhere to stay. Now, as you come up towards the cliff and you walk this direction, you can actually head two directions. You can actually go forward and head towards more houses, or you can head this way and go through the secret garden. So I decided to hide this in the middle of the village just because because I thought it would be nice just to have some greenery in here. Not only that, it breaks up all the houses a little bit and actually added a little bit of variety to the world. But of course, this opens up back onto another cliff and down to the far end, you have the second church of this village. And as we walk back, we see more houses as well as a few shops along the way. Now, as you've probably heard me say multiple times now, we can actually head this direction and see even more houses. Now, I kind of went over top with all the houses, but I did have a lot of space on this island. Now, the final thing in this village is actually this building right here. This building is actually a copy of a build I did for for a oakwood house. Now this was one of the first builds I ever did for the channel and I thought it'd be a nice little final touch to actually use it as like a manor house. But as previously mentioned, this was actually finished at 4,500 views on the channel, which is an amazing achievement when I first started, simply because at the time the channel wasn't actually that big and it actually took a couple months before we actually got to this point. So I did have quite a lot of time to get these builds done. So originally I actually only ever did updates for this world whenever I hit 500 views more. So for example, the first part was at 500, the next was at 1000, then 1500 and so on. So it actually did take a while before we did get through each part, but it was actually worth the wait because it actually gave me the time to actually work on what I wanted to have built in this world and plan ahead. Now as we come back to the front gate, we're actually going to head the opposite way. And by the opposite way, I mean down the bigger path or the actual crossroad. That way was the Nameless Village, and then this one is Foxgrove. Now we're going to head towards the smaller builds. Now the reason why there's so many paths in this world is because I wanted everything to feel connected, and the best way of doing that is actually building pathways to each of the builds. And as we come to the top of here, not only do we see the subscriber monument, we actually come to another crossroad. This is actually for a future project, and hopefully at some point I'll be able to get to this. But I do plan on actually getting my skills a little bit better in regards to the plans I have for it. But for now, it's just going to be a pathway. But now as I come down this direction, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with what I show here, just simply because if I go too far this way while showing it in this view, you'll actually get to see what is actually happening with the next part of the bigger city that I have planned. But I know I've already said it twice already, but every single one of these trees were actually hand-placed. And not only that, if we come up here a little bit, you can actually see the number count on which this was actually finished on, which was 5,000. As we come out of the forest, we actually enter the ranch. Now, this one was actually quite a nice little build that I did. I thought it would be nice to actually have an area that actually gave purpose to the horses. As you can imagine with the pathways in this world, it would make sense that they have horses to actually get from place to place. And not only that, the necessary food to actually feed them. And as you can see, we have a nice little stables here, and right on the back we actually have a horse paddock where all the horses can roam free. Now there are two crossroads that go this way, so there's one that goes that direction, and there's another that goes this way. Now I haven't actually got anything going these directions just yet, but I do plan to have something built on this little island here, as well as on the hill over there. But for now, we're actually going to head this direction. Now I'm going to be very careful on what I show here just simply because the wall is just off to the left and I hope to have that finished before I show it off. But as you can see we have a nice little coastline path that goes around the side of here and as we come to the top of the stairs you can actually see the cliff. Now this is actually the second time that I've done the cliff and as rightly pointed out in the comments I'm not too much of a fan of this just simply because it is a bit repetitive. Now at some point I do hope to learn world edit and reattempt this but for now I think this actually looks great. But as we come close to the cliff we actually have a little walkway that we've built into the side of it just simply because it added a nice little path feature rather than actually building something to fit into the landscape. Now this cliff is actually all custom. This wasn't here to begin with. As you probably saw in the first clip where we showed the village being put into this world, it actually left a massive hole in this place and needed to be covered up and I thought a cliff would be a great design choice. So to kind of show this off, if I break through here for a quick second, you can see like this is where everything is and you can actually go right under here and this is the actual proper terrain that was actually supposed to be here. And of course, due to Lightmatica, you can actually see right through the bottom of the fountain in the main village. So when you actually come right through here, it's actually one of the pens for the pigs and it comes right to that village. But enough of that, we can actually cover that back up and we can start heading over here towards the sugarcane farm. Now the reason I built this was simply because I wanted something to explain why there were so many books in the world. And since we get paper from sugarcanes, it made sense to have a little bit of a sugarcane farm. Now I wanted it to be a simple design because I didn't want it to actually overtake anything that was going on around it, as this is actually going to 
be a walkway that walks all the way around the building and then over there into the further land. Now I have no idea what I'm actually going to build out here, but at some point I hope to have something quite interesting. But for now, that was everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoy this world. I really do like building on this world and I hope to actually grow it alongside the channel as mentioned before. But for now, that's the end of the video, so I'll see you in the next one.